Hi, welcome to Primetime Pickleball. My name is Jordan Briones, and in today's video, we're gonna answer the age-old question, should the forehand always take the middle? Let's jump right in. Missing one of our videos is like missing an easy put away. Don't let that be you. Subscribe now. All right, so I got to play a couple of fun rec games the other day, and this happened. Has this ever happened to you? Maybe you and your partner are right up at the non-volley zone, and before you know it, the ball whizzes by right between you and your partner. I'll be the first to admit that this has happened to me on several occasions. Now to answer the question, should the forehand always take the middle, I'll start off by asking an even more important question, and that is who's in the best position to cover the middle ball, you or your partner? So why is this question more important? Let's go back and watch this and break it down. Here's my dad and I playing against two good friends of ours, Drew and Jim. Here we see Drew hit a nice deep slice return down the middle. And here you see me drive this third shot because I know Drew's forehand slice stays very low and that it could be pretty difficult to hit a precise drop off of a well hit slice. I choose to hit my drive to Drew because he is still on his way up to the net and his partner Jim is already set in a good balanced ready position at the non-volley zone line. Now my drive here is good enough to force Drew to hit a short volley that lands a bit past the non-volley zone line. And here you see me split step and get ready to hit my fifth shot into the non-volley zone. Here you'll see me really squeeze over to that center line to put more pressure on Jim and Drew. Since this was a competitive game, Jim and Drew were typically trying to keep the ball away from me and by me squeezing and shifting over more towards that center line, it can do several things. Number one, it allows me to take all the middle dinks and or to create winning or put away shots through the middle. Number two, it creates a very small target for them to hit to if they are trying to get it over to my partner. And number three, it leaves a window open near my sideline to bait them to hitting it there, in which case is exactly what I want as I am trying to get more involved in the game. After a series of unattackable dinks, watch here as my dad tries to hit the ball through the middle. Here we see Jim cover this ball with ease as it struck right towards his paddle. Even though this drive was hit right to Jim, it was low enough to prevent him from counterattacking this ball. Next we see another series of unattackable dinks, and here we see Jim's backhand dink pull my dad towards his sideline. Let's look at where my dad is contacting this ball. From this angle, it looks like he's hitting the ball right above his sideline. So, in this scenario, who's in the best position to cover the middle ball, Jim or Drew? Before we answer that, let's talk about shading. What is shading, you ask? Shading is moving or shifting your position as a team according to where the ball is in your opponent's court to put yourself in the best position to defend your side of the court. You will constantly see high-level players shade as the ball moves around the court. Let's watch a few clips together of different players shading. As we just watched, in order to best defend your side of the court, you must shade. It all comes down to the possible shots available to your opponent and the trajectory that those shots will take from your opponent's paddle to the bounce on your side of the court. You'll also want to factor in what their highest percentage shots are. Let's see what can happen when you don't properly shade. Let's check out this point here. Here you see me hit a really deep serve, which forces a very short return just beyond the non-volley zone. This allows me to really step in and attack this ball. As this return is headed towards me, I know that I'm in the driver's seat of this rally. And because of this, I want to make sure that I keep my foot on the gas, so to speak, and attack this short ball with a third shot drive. 
Let's take a look at a few good options that I have as I strike this ball. The first option that I have is to catch the returner in transition. Due to his short return, you can see that he's only made it up about halfway through the transition area. So driving the ball somewhere at his feet is my first option. Another option that I have is to drive it right at my opponent at the non-volley zone. This player is the player that is closest to me, which therefore has the least amount of reaction time. The third option I have is to hit the drive through here down the line. Before we proceed, which option do you think is best in this scenario? Now, let's take a look at which option I chose. As we see here, I chose to go down the line, and thankfully, my drive lands right on the line for a clean winner. Why did I choose to go down the line here? Well, let's take a look. As I get into position to hit this third shot drive, notice my opponent here at the non-volley zone. He is positioned slightly to the left of his side. Now let's quickly draw the possible trajectories that my driving shot could take. The possible trajectory for a hard hit drive range from about here to here. The ends of these arrows signifies where the ball could bounce and hit the playing surface. So knowing this, is the player at the non-volley zone in the best position to cover his part of the court? No. He has left a small window open near his sideline. As I saw the small window open, I took full advantage of it. Now just to be clear, I really wasn't meaning to hit the sideline. Every time I hit any shot in pickleball, I try to give myself an extra foot or two to give myself margin for error. As you can see in the slow-mo footage here, even if my shot would have landed a foot or two inside the court, it still would have been a pretty tough shot for this net player, as he should have been shifted and shaded over towards the sideline to about here. To cover this down the line shot, Now let's watch this next point, which is almost identical to the first. Here, my partner and I are stacking, and as this return comes back our way, let's look at the range of the possible trajectories that my partner's shot could take. My partner's hard hit drive can be hit from about here to here. So as my partner gets ready to hit this shot, are both players in the best position to cover the court? Let's watch and see what happens. Here, the net player gets passed on his sideline again. Why is this? As we go back and freeze the frame at contact, notice how he is slightly shifted and shaded over towards the center line. As we look at where my partner is striking the ball, you can see that he has a small window open down the line. Just like the previous point, he sees this opportunity and takes advantage of it. We want to be clear that although the examples seen here show the selected shot as a down the line passing shot, that this option of the three mentioned has the lowest margin for error and you have to consider carefully whether it is a smart shot for you. We often see this shot being overused when it's not really in a player's wheelhouse to attempt hitting such a small target. If you don't have the skill to make this down the line passing shot eight or more out of 10 times, then the higher percentage options and best options most of the time and in order are number one, at the feet of the transitioning player, and number two, attempting to overpower the net player if you feel your power will defeat their reaction time. A general rule of thumb when it comes to shading is to follow the ball. This means that as the ball moves closer to a particular sideline on your opponent's side of the court, you should shift over towards that sideline to put you and your partner in the best position to cover your side of the court. Just as we see here, this net player is shifted away from the sideline that the ball is near. And as this return comes cross court, he doesn't properly shade over towards the sideline and as a result, leaves a small window open and loses the point. Now let's go back and check out the point that we saw in the beginning of this video. Here, you see my dad and I make our way through the transition zone, getting to a two up, two up neutral formation. After that, we see a series of dinks, an attack and a reset and then another series of some good unattackable dinks. Now we get to the point ending shot. So, now that we know about shading, whose responsibility is it to cover this ball through the middle? Well, from where my dad is contacting the ball, which looks to be right on top of his sideline, let's draw the range of possible trajectories that his driving shot could take. From this position, he can reasonably hit a hard topspin drive anywhere from the end of this arrow here to the end of this arrow here. Knowing this, are our opponents in the best position possible to cover their side of the court? Are they correctly shading? You guessed it, no, they're not. 
Drew, the player in the blue, should be shifted a bit over to his left here to cover the possible down the line shot. As for Jim, the player in black, he should be shifted more over towards the center line, about here. So if you've already guessed that this should have been Jim's ball, you're correct. If you didn't already notice, Jim and Drew both have their forehands in the middle, as Jim is a lefty. So to prove the point that the forehand shouldn't always take the middle ball, let's watch the end of this next point, which is nearly identical. Here we see all four players have already made it up to the non-volley zone. And you could see me here straddling the center line, trying to apply pressure on my opponents and trying to get more involved in play. The player in the white hits a deep dink towards the middle of the non-volley zone, which pushes me a bit back off the line. Now, as I'm still very close to the center line, I know that I have left this cross-court dink shot open here. For one, I know that I'm quick enough to cover this dink if it's hit there. And secondly, it's actually the shot that I'm looking for as I'm always trying to find ways to create winning shots from my forehand side. Next, we see the player in white hit this cross-court dink towards my sideline, just as I was expecting. As I quickly get to this ball, let's look at the positioning of my opponents and let's see how they shade. From this angle, it looks like this dink forced me to contact the ball a bit outside my sideline. Notice how both my opponents shift over to their left as the ball moves towards my sideline. Just like the previous scenario, I can either take this ball and attack it down the line, or I can take it more through the middle of the court. Let's quickly take a look at the player directly in front of me. His shoulders and paddle are turned toward my contact point, and it looks like his weight is leaning towards his sideline. Also, you can see that his paddle position is set in a backhand position. For all these reasons, it looks to me that he has the down the line shot well covered and that he's expecting it. Now let's look at the player in the white. Even though he has shifted over a bit, his dink has pulled me very wide as I'm contacting the ball beyond the sideline. So in this case, for him to be in the best position to cover his part of the court, he should really be closer to the center line around here. You can see here that the ball barely clips the end of his paddle and goes out of bounds. If he had just shaded a step or two closer to that center line, he would have been in a much better position to hit and counterattack this ball. So hopefully you see the importance of shading and how deciding on who should take the middle ball really depends on who's in the best position to take it. Sometimes players just make great shots and you aren't going to be able to cover every single ball. But you can definitely put you and your partner in the best position possible by correctly shading. Now, let's show you a fun drill that you can do with a partner to practice on covering the middle ball, especially in a neutral formation when all four players are up at the non-volley zone line. Hi, if you're really liking this content, please give this video a like. We really appreciate it. It really helps us out. And now, let's get right back to the video. All right, so now that we know how to correctly shade, I'm going to show you a great drill that you can do with a partner. Just like we said, you should constantly be shifting over and following the ball as the ball moves around the court. All right, so for this drill, I have my wife Katrina over there and we're both cross court from each other and we're both on the even side, okay? This is how we're gonna set up. I'm going to uh, start and feed the ball and we're going to be dinking cross court. All right, and what you can see behind me is I have a target of four cones there and we're going to start off here like I said by dinking cross court and then when Katrina gets pulled off wide I have to be shaded over towards the middle to cover this middle ball okay because if she's contacting the ball right there from this camera you can see or fr from a dink below when she's contacting a ball right here uh, my partner should should be covering the down the line Okay, so that leaves the middle vulnerable. Okay, so it's my responsibility to shade over and slide over and cover this middle ball. So we're gonna start dinking here. And then when she gets a wide ball, she's gonna go for that target right there, right in the middle of the court, that shot that we just uh, saw. And then I am going to do my best to cover that ball and try to volley that ball down, okay, down at the feet. All right, so this is just a really good drill that you can do, and let's see it here.
All right, so hopefully this drill just really helps you out. Um, remember, you can also set this drill up on the odd side as well. I didn't show you that today, but you can dink odd side to odd side and move those cones to the other side of the court. Hopefully this drill will really help you start anticipating those middle shots, especially when your opponent gets pulled off the court and is contacting the ball close to the sidelines we really want to make sure that we slide over if we're cross court from that player and cover that middle ball so i hope this was really helpful to you and we'll see you in the next video if you enjoyed this video please give it a like thanks so much for watching for more free video lessons please visit primetimepickleball.com but before you head on over there Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Also, for primetime pickleball shirts like this and other great apparel, please visit ptpgear.com.